Um, Okay, um, we are streaming and ready to go. Okay. Think. The April 21, 2021 meeting of the Sandusky Landmark Commission shall come to order. Roll call, please. Dr. Berkey. Here. Mr. Lawrence. Here. Mr. Galea. Here. Mr. Nagel. Here. Mr. Whaley. Here. Commissioner Meinzer is not on, and Mr. Griffiths is absent today. Okay. Um, first item is our the review of our March 17, 2021 meeting minutes. Do we have any changes or corrections? If no, not. Go ahead. I move that we accept the minutes as Thank presented. You. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of uh, approving the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Minutes approved. Okay. Since we had no applications uh, to review this evening, um, I thought we'd take this opportunity to kind of do a reset um, for Ryan Whaley's benefit. Ryan, for I know since I've been on the commission and Joe's our senior member, he can attest to this, uh, as well as Tom. From time to time in meetings, we sit there and say, well, we really ought to do this. We really ought to do that. Uh, sometimes it's language. Sometimes it's other issues that we need to focus on. And then uh, Tom tries to slip our ankles and then kind of have been on this constant stream of focus solely on applications. And so us that uh, this spring, maybe we get back on track. And uh, I'll just open it up a little bit, especially to some of the veterans on the commission and kind of think back on some of these things that we've discussed and how we can bring some focus to those. Uh, Joe, how many times have we sat there and said, let's do this, let's do that? Well, um, and, and actually, um, that probably even creates you being on the commission, Tim, because if I'm trying to think of when I first got named to, you know, when, when planning and landmark um, was essentially the same membership as coterminous, um, I know there were a few times when Mike Zuloff had, I, I think, a similar approach that, that you do and, and um, you know, had, had made, we had conversations along those lines prior to your being on here and Ryan and Ryan and John and, and all the others that have rotated on. And so, um, you know, that's just been an ongoing thing. There's never enough time, it seems, because we are generally focused on you know, the business at hand. And uh, by the time you get through that, and maybe you spend an hour, hour and a half in a meeting and then uh, everybody's, we're, we're ready to move on, you know, the rest of our evening. So um, yeah, that, that comes up quite a bit. And I think we've identified through the years, lots of things that we could be doing better. And, and you know, I feel like I've been on long enough to see some of the, the issues that we maybe identified a couple of years ago now come to fruition now we're now come to the fore at this point so you can kind of see a life cycle of some of the things that you know we identify whether that's through an application or just through our own experience in the community and then maybe a couple years later we see that yeah there was a reason to have that concern or, or maybe it resolved itself you know as case may be but i definitely think we've had a, a culture of Let's see if we can kind of uh, improve the way this functions, because as a separate body unto itself, I don't think Landmark's got a very long history. So I think we're kind of in that phase of we need to sort of develop some of how 
this is going to work and really find our footing as it relates to you know city government and, and what's going on in the community. John, Ryan, I mean, I guess I'm the uh, am I the no? I guess I've Ryan's been on shorter time than I have, but um, Tam, did you get a chance to talk with? I know you were after the last meeting that we had. You know, there was going to be some other meetings with other city staff. Did you guys get a chance to meet at all? No. Okay. No, but what I did was I went through. This out tells you how much time I have on my hands. I went through a bunch of our old meeting minutes, um, and I kind of chuckled because I know there was the meeting minutes of October of 2019 where we listed a whole bunch of stuff that we ought to be doing. And so I thought, then it gave me an idea, well, what I might do over the next like two weeks is pull those minutes and run through them and see if I can grab as many of those things and incorporate them into a list that I could share with everybody. And at our May meeting, maybe start to put some meat on the bones and look at, okay, in addition to the goals that Tom laid out first for the year, and I'm sure some of these fit under those goals. How can we get some of these things uh, on track and and uh, moving in the right direction? Um, and of course, you know, I looked back at the last 12 months. I, I know in in my teaching of leadership, we talk a lot about organizational drift. And if you're not careful, uh, you can move away from the original intent of what you're supposed to be doing because you maybe get focused on something so much. And I think one of our challenges is that we've always had applications we had to review, and we saw that as the main uh, purpose or main uh, focus of our work. But um, the reason I asked Kristen to attach uh, chapter 1161 was to take us back to what's our purpose? What are we supposed to be doing? And then specifically under the section uh, where the where it talks about powers and duties, we're doing essentially two of those things, but the rest of them are are those things that we've really talked about doing, but really haven't put a lot of attention to. So um, I didn't plan on having a, la a long meeting unless you've got other things you want to discuss, but I thought we could kind of go through those quickly and then set some action items for May uh, in terms of these items. So if you've got a copy of 1161 handy, um, or if you've got another device you can bring it up on, um, if, you know, Kristen attached it to the agenda. But um, if you take a look at the uh, very beginning of that document, let me get mine in front of me here. Right at the beginning where it says intent, I'll read it in case people don't have the document in front of me in front of you. It says the intent is, our intent, which is what a lot of organizations call their charge, is to designate, preserve, protect, and enhance current and future landmark and historic properties and structures and properties within the historic districts within the city of Sandusky. Two, to foster civic pride in and consistent with established long-term goals and policies of the city. Three, to stabilize or improve the aesthetic and economic vitality and values of landmark and historic sites, structures, and district. Four, to protect and enhance the city's attraction to tourists and visitors. And five, to promote the use of these sites for the improvements and objects for the education, invigoration, and the welfare of the people of the city. So if you take that intent and you then move over to you go to the bottom of the second page where they list powers and duties of the landmark commission that's where that's where our charge gets real specific and if you turn to that um the first item says that we are to be recommending to the city commission legislation for designation of individual landmark properties sites and districts that would serve to beautify protect preserve restore and develop the city um so 
that's one of those things that I've heard us bring up in the past. Um, Tom has reminded us of that from time to time, is going out and looking actively for landmark designations uh, throughout the city. We have two um, landmark districts, the downtown area and then uh, the cable, the former um, um, Erie County, um, what do I want to say, fair grounds. Um, and so we just have two, correct, Tom? Yes, that's right. So I don't know if there's ever been any thought or discussion, but that would raise the question of, do we have any other interesting historic areas of the city that we ought to explore a little bit and, and consider in addition to individual landmarks? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through these, jump in at any point you want, and what I'd like to do for our next meeting in May is to go through these areas and ask yourself if you've got an interest in working on one of these, perhaps with somebody else on the commission or with somebody uh, at city level or with me, so that in our next meeting, maybe we can start to uh, kind of have a person to be like the, the point person for this item to, to get it moving. Um, item B, study the problems and determine the needs of the city in restoring and preserving historic building structures, areas, and neighborhoods. Um, if you look at B, it raises the question, how would we go about studying those kinds of problems and, and determining the needs of the city as it relates to uh, preserving historic building structures, neighborhoods, et cetera? It almost sounds like it calls for a needs assessment of some sort. Um, and uh, I'm sure several of you in your walks of life, your organizations have done needs assessments. Um, I don't know, Tom, if you're aware of any uh, landmark commissions out there that have conducted needs assessments, but uh, I think that'd be an area that would be interesting to explore and then perhaps conduct it at some point. Um, and then if you look at C and D, that's primarily what we've been doing. That, that's the certificates of appropriateness. E um, refers to we should be working to erect historic markers to denote landmark and historic buildings within the city. Since I've been on the commission, and I guess it goes back to Joe, have we ever done that, Tom, since we've had a landmark commission? No, okay. that's, no, not in, my, not in my tenure on here. OK, so Tom, do we have a budget? Um, or we'd have uh, to be creative. I doubt that I'm aware of. I don't know specifically, but I believe so. so. So just to interject, Tim, I think that sounds to me like a good good type of, uh, you know, fundraiser subject. You know, I mean, that's the sort of thing where we can maybe put something together and then figure out an appropriate fundraiser, solicit donations, wherever the case may be. We obviously have a lot of um, community foundations and stuff that are active here in town and obviously a lot of, um, you know, businesses and, and people all walks of life that I think are very interested in, you know, historic nature of the city. So I think there's definitely, you know, fundraiser fundraising opportunities to maybe fulfill that part of it. Also, yeah, hopefully we can get a little bit of city money out of it too. Ship, Shippo's uh, Ohio History Grant, uh, that's applicable use of funds as well. That's done in October of every year. Um, so that, that's another option. Any other thoughts there? <laughs> Ryan, have you seen that in the city? Sorry, you broke out for a minute there. Just, okay. Were you asking me? Have you seen like in, in the cities you work with that the cities uh, perform that service? I, you know, I've seen, I grew up in Avon and the Avon Historical Society did that probably in the, I'd say around 2005, six, you know, where they went around, they had a committee that went around and designated homes and businesses and whatever historic landmarks. and. But I don't know where they got their 
funds from. I think that the homeowners actually paid something for it. Uh I don't think it was a free thing. I think, you know, it was a, hey, you know, we're going to add your house to the list of, you know, historic homes for the city. You know, would you like a plaque? It's here. It's 40 bucks or whatever case may be. And they give you it's like a bronze and black plaque that's about, I don't know, nine inches by nine by seven. It's not very big, but it's something. You know, another thought came to mind is some of these um, some of these buildings that for which we've approved applications that are specifically downtown doing uh, restoration work or improvements are actually a whole new building. Um, it, we could maybe formalize that part of it as well and make sure that the builder, the owner um, knows that um, there are such things as plaques to designate their building and either you know, through their own funding, I don't think it's a lot of money, but it, it might be a nice coordination to say, you know, a, a nice finishing piece to your building might be an historical plaque um, that we could help you with in terms of, um, you know, the information, the language. I, I helped the Old House Guild with their, um, their marker out in front. Um, so uh, this looks like something that's like low hanging fruit for us that we could accomplish um, somehow. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, like on uh, some of those, you know, Tom's done such a great amount of research on them. We have it sitting right there too to Wouldn't be that put onto a plaque or offer it to the owner. We should really right. consider moving on that. All right. Anything else on markers? F is act as liaison on behalf of the city of Sandusky to individuals and organizations concerned with historic preservation. Um, I think so far um, we, we probably have identified uh, the Old House Guild and the Erie County Historical Society. Are there any others that come to mind in the community that we should be connecting with? If not, you know, maybe it's focusing on those two organizations and reaching out a little bit more and looking at as we come up with these lists of things to focus on is to engage them in somehow some of, some of their resources, maybe yeah, maybe the historical society or the old house guild helping us identify some of the uh, chairman. Yeah. Yes, Tim. Uh, you know, I think I kind of take this as well as. Um, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, the, the old house guild and a lot of these organizations are, are really looking around. Um, and a lot of times they'll have a pulse on, you know, what, what, what building someone purchased, what, uh, what uh, maybe they saw, you know, a, a paint truck or something like that. This might be our opportunity to kind of get ahead of some things and um, kind of have our members or one of us anyway, reach out and say, Hey, I saw you, uh, got a new fence or whatever it is, we might be able to help out if they ever get to that position where they're going to need us. This kind of, to me, kind of seems like this is our opportunity to just kind of get ahead of what could be potentially happening so we're not running into things and really letting folks know before they get in front of us. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, Ryan, because the old house guild picks a group of homes in the community each year. They actually go out in the neighborhood and they identify property owners who made improvements to their home. Oh yeah, I, I got that award once. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So there's there's one ready-made list, right? Yeah. And it's it just a knock on the door, or a phone call. Maybe not a knock on the door quite yet, but a phone call is certainly uh, certainly something that we could do. And I, I bet we would uh, we would get a lot of details and make our lives a little easier in the future, kind of kind of utilizing those relationships. Any other thoughts? No. Uh, Going on, it says educate citizens regarding historic preservation issues and concerns. Well, Tom's articles certainly are doing that. Um, and, and I think, I don't know if, if you get feedback from people, Tom, on it, but um, I see stuff online where people are reading your article and it starts a conversation. Yeah, I remember this and I remember that. And I, had a, I had a relative that was connected to that building that he's talking about. Um, 
I think here's another opportunity we, where we could expand on that and just have another way of reaching out to people. Um, yeah, to speak to that, um, thank you. I, I think that's one of the, the more interesting things is hearing people's stories about places. Um, and one thing I wanted to work with the, um, you know, use the historical society and their Facebook page and utilize even the cities more to kind of spur those those conversations. And, you know, I always do try to mention in those pieces if something's a, a landmark or not, um, just to kind of raise awareness of that. So, um, so yeah, I think we can do do more to spur those discussions with people. Um, a thought on that, um, can we do something, can we maybe partner up with, um, I know if you look at like our um, Sandusky Library, they've got some really good, um, you know, resources on, on the history of town and they, they do a nice job. They put a blog up. I was just actually looking at it yesterday or today about um, they had a uh, old uh, rail guy that, that had like the railroad timetables for railroads coming into town, you know, in the 1870s and 80s. And, um, you know, maybe we could partner up with them um, to, you know, kind of basically take oral histories or work on some of these things. Um, could be something maybe with uh, partner up with a university. I don't know, you know, I mean, maybe BG Toledo students, maybe that's a history student or, or a journalism student or in some of those fields, maybe a uh, summer project. I mean, I think there's some ways that we could kind of leverage that to, to get some of that, especially while we still have it, because I think sometimes you think of, of um, elders in our community, the stuff that, that they might remember um, about how things looked um, in, in the past, um, you know, the, the time, it's, it's kind of seeing us through an hourglass with some of those memories. So I think the more we can do to, um, you know, get that recorded and, and saved is, is going to benefit all of us. Absolutely. Any other thoughts there? Uh, G is something that I'll ask Tom to speak to a little bit. Um, and that's the inventory for historic and cultural resources within the city. Tom, talk to us about the process of updating that, how that works. Is that something that we do annually? Is it, or is it more as things change? So we keep a list on file in the office of all of our designated districts sites. Um, and then we also maintain that list with the State Historic Preservation Office and their mapping system. And then um, I believe Kristen sent out the link to our online map. So we have them all mapped um, and they're all linked. Each of the individual sites on the map is linked to their national register form. And we have our two local landmarks listed as well. Um, yeah, I think where the need is our, our last full survey was done by the old house guild i think in the 1970s of um, both uh, of all really historic structures in the city um, that spoke of condition and and in history uh, a lot of those that survey led to a lot of the national register designations that we currently have but that was a, a, to my knowledge in the last time there was any sort of extensive survey um, beyond just the listing of the property um, and um, and we have those all maintained um, on record in our office, all those forms. Um, but that's that's what that uh, entails uh, at this point. So, um, do, you, do you think that's something we could engage our historical societies in doing again? Um, yeah, I, um, there were a few leaders of the old house guild that were really active in um, in pursuing national register nominations. I think this may have been a way to kind of get that going. Um, and so I, you know, I do think that would be a, an opportunity. I believe they got a grant for that to help fund some of that uh, and for some of the costs. Um, I think they worked with the library as well and some of the documentation. Um, but I do think that would be a good opportunity to engage, uh, particularly the Old House Guild, uh, with any assistance to at least have a more detailed inventory of all of our designated properties that we have. It's also a good resource, as you mentioned before, looking at additional properties that we, we, may, we may want to designate. As part of that survey, they indicated whether they thought the property was eligible for the National Register or not. Um, and so those that listing is um, you know still with us internally. Um, 
but yeah. Okay. All right, so an action item for May is to think about these various areas and see if you've got a personal interest in in maybe being a point person on our commission for that issue. Doesn't mean you're all by yourself and you're doing all that work. We're just asking if you would take a leadership role in being a point person for one of those. And you know, we don't have we don't we have two members missing this evening. So we'll bring it up again next time. But I promise you we're not going to continue to hiccup. We're going to get on track with these and try to put some meat on the bone. Um, Chairman, as we're as we're going through this, if you don't mind, just a just a comment. Sure. Um, um, especially as we're kind of ramping up to 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 do these ideas, and I think it's wonderful. Um, you know, just I, I just read uh, chapter eleven sixty one again today a few times, and you know, it really actually is it it it, it it's a pretty pretty solid document. Every it really goes back to that intent. So I, I think as we're you know considering what we might do to increase anything from historical markers to, to new buildings, really go back and look at where that falls and that intent and how we tackle that. I mean, for one thing, one that just jumps out at me, you know, number four in the tent is protecting the hand these attractions of tourists and visitors. Well, if anything, that's what we are. So right. like, I want to make sure that we're kind of, kind of uh, highlighting what Sandusky is, what it's becoming and making sure we're planning um, right. for the future properly as we're going through this. Just a comment, just yep. kind of on, on, the top of, on the top of my mind. Thanks, guys. Good point. Anything else? Okay, I'm jumping then to B, uh, proposed changes to application process for certificate of appropriateness. Um, if you look, I had Christian attach the application used to sing. And one of the things, challenges, I think, that as we grow and evolve, and I think that's what our discussion is this evening is, what's our next step? You know, we, we're a young uh, commission. We're evolving now. We're moving forward. And as you look through, and I'll, and I'll send out the list as I go through all of the old um, meeting minutes and all the issues we identified, some of those point to the need to engage uh, an applicant earlier in the process and to clarify what our interests and expectations are in reviewing their plans. So I'm, I'm going to turn to Ryan Nagel for just a few minutes. Ryan's dealt with, I'm sure, a lot of municipalities and looked at these types of applications. And, uh, and I asked Ryan if he would partner with me. I have downloaded probably two dozen of these from various cities across the country. And you start to see some common things that I think we ought to consider incorporating so that our applicants have a better understanding of what information to convey to us. One of the things that I see is sometimes when we get an application, we're trying to make an instant decision on the spot because we're seeing the information for the first time. And I think if you could pro provide some more depth to that application, without being an extreme burden to the applicant, but in a way that gets that and fleshes that information out, I think it would be helpful more to our commission members to be earlier and in a more depth. Ryan, you want to share some of your experiences? Yeah, no, I, I think another thing that we do, and it's, I don't know if it's good or it's bad, but it's different, a lot of landmarks commissions that meetings that I've been a part of, you know, when we do ours, Tom kind of gives, you know, he takes the center stage as far as explaining what they're doing. Whereas most other commissions that I've been involved with, you know, their version of Tom might give us or their chairperson a brief summary of, you know, this is the applicant, this is the property, you know, we all have a copy of their application beforehand or, you know, whatever, but they kind of let either the owner or their architect or whoever their consultant is take the lead and kind of take us through their entire story. Whereas, you know, 
I don't think it should be Tom's job to explain everything that they're trying to do to us. I think we need to put that more on the applicant. And I, I feel like a lot of it's, you know, Tom gives us a summary and then, you know, we ask them, you got anything to add? And they're kind of like, well, no. And whereas I feel like if we said, if we kind of teed them up and let them run and, you know, give them five or 10 minutes to give us a summary of what they're doing, it would give us a little clear, a little better context of exactly what they're trying to do. Now, you know, some of our applicants are better than others at that. You know, we've seen good presenters and we've seen not so good presenters, but you know, the, the really, I, I've found that useful both, you know, when we do it for work, I mean, it's, it's usually us or our architect. That's the one guiding the landmarks commission members through our entire plan. And I think that's helpful. Well, the school teacher educator in me says, you know, if you want somebody to give you a good presentation, you got to, you've got to outline it in terms of what they need to walk us through. Yeah. And I guess what I'm implying with the application, if you recall at our last meeting, Rob Deckard, I thought really did a good job of uh, something that I would like to see in our application. And that is tell us what you discovered about this building in terms of its history, in terms of the condition of the building, its historical features, and then tell us, what your what your plans are to preserve those features um in my mind if you know just from a marketing point of view if i was trying to sell this to a landmark commission i'd want to do that mm -hmm. because that's music to our ears that's what we're all about um and some of the applicants do that some of them don't do that and then it puts us in a position to start asking those questions and sometimes they're prepared sometimes they're not other thoughts on on applications well here's what what we'll pledge is um i'll work with ryan we'll look at what other cities do we'll put together a first draft and have that ready for you to examine at our next meeting give feedback give reaction just to get the ball rolling the, the other items on this list, well, I'm sorry, I'm skipping over C. C, issues in need of attention. I just started listing some of the more current ones, but I'm going to go, as I said, back through our meeting minutes and expand on that list, and we'll shoot that out to you. So if you think we're missing anything, we'll get it on the list. I, I think these items start to fall under the categories of duties that we're trying to get back on track in terms of performing. So I think once we have a kind of that list of here's been our concerns, we can probably fit those underneath several of these areas. And then as Ryan Whaley said, take us back and match it up with our purpose, our intent. Um, just looking at notes here. So then the rest of the items, D, E, F, G, those are, the same things that we just really went through under the duties and powers of the Landmark Commission. So I don't think we need to run through those again. Um, so let me throw out some action items for, for May. Um, we just got done talking about uh, bringing you a draft application, the first draft to look at. Um, Second, I promise that I'll go through these minutes and give you a draft of a list of concerns that we keep bringing up over the months and years. Um, so when you get that, take a look and if there's any to add to it that we missed, please do that. Um, and then the third action item is about yourself. Think about these um, these areas and see if you might have a per personal interest in kind of shepherding on our commission one of those areas. Sound like a plan? Yes. That's, that's about all I've got, gentlemen. Uh, just wanted to use this as an opportunity to get us back on track. I'll touch base with our two members that weren't with us this evening 
and kind of bring them up to speed on what we're doing and what we're trying to set ourselves up to start in May. Um, and then I'm looking here. Tom, do you want to review? Do you have any administrative approvals that you want to talk about? Uh, I did uh, send that in, had Kristen uh, send that in the packet. Um, we administratively approved the new paddle bar signage uh, for Commission Member Whaley, uh, which essentially is just a replacement of the uh, similar signage that was there for Makaru. Um, staff felt it uh, appropriately met the the guidelines and um, and administratively approved. So um, our approval letter was in there, uh, but it seemed pretty pretty straightforward from our perspective. So that's the only one that we had come had come through. Tom, are there any one of the things that I that's that you've done once in a while? And I think we ought to do it on a regular basis. Is bring back our the architect and maybe owner of a project that we approved and it's it's now under construction um you know at, at some point i'm thinking we're watching all the work being done now on the cook building um, at some point we ought to probably bring back the architect bring back you know the owners and have them give us an update gives them a, an opportunity to brag about what they're doing and gives us the opportunity as a landmark commission to say to ourselves, okay, this is what they said they were going to do, or we're just double checking, or are they following through on that? So if you wouldn't mind, could you touch base um, with Mr. Foster and uh, see when he thinks or the Hogarfees think they would be ready to, to do an update? Chairman, I question is that is that something we can ask for? I want to make sure we're just covering our bases. Is that you know? Can are we okay to do that? I don't see anything that prohibits us. Okay, I, I just want to make sure we're not. Uh, I, I don't see anything about it anywhere, so I just want to make sure that we're not. I, mean, I, I like the idea, oh, but I just want to make sure we're not crossing the line here. I don't think so. I think that comes more in, in a sense of is is there a mechanism to require them to do that? Yeah, that's kind of my. You know, I mean, I think voluntarily, if we ask anybody like, hey, you know, you've been working on this project, I think when I think of like, you know, the Hogarfees are a good example of, of a, you know, couple who, who are doing good things and I think want to be involved. But, right. you know, you may get an applicant who's just going to say, eh, I don't have to do that. I don't want to. Yeah. And, and we have no real ability to. Yeah, I guess that's, that's yeah. kind of where I can yeah. see I'm going yeah. to be in front of those guys again. Yeah. Right, right. Right, I agree. Yeah, fully voluntary. Yeah. I bet if they were invited, they would do it. And we do that all the time for uh, our neighborhood block clubs here that we're when we're doing a project, you know, whatever the neighborhood block club is. After we're approved and once we've been under construction for a while, we always go back, you know, about halfway through and say, you know, hey, this is where we are. This is when, you know, we're still on course to be finished. Right. Then, you know, any, and by that time, about halfway through, we have, or we're ready to announce, you know, any of our commercial tenants that we've got lined up, you know, things like that. Good. Good. Tom, you got anything else? Um, just a uh, update on department um, staffing. We, as you, some of you may have seen, um, I put a posting out for a chief planner position um, as staffing's been needed in our office for a while, considering I've been, um, you know, doing the transit administrator job for I think eight months now and, um, you know, know that we need a staff member who can dedicate time to the Landmark Commission. Uh, and so we are um, continuing with that hiring process and hope to have someone on board soon um, that can be able to really take planning and landmark and um, and all of that and really dedicate the, the time needed if that's, uh, that's appropriate. So hopefully we'll have an announcement within the coming weeks about that. Well, we know you've been running yourself ragged, Tom, and appreciate your efforts. Um, uh, you, you, you're taking on a lot and have, have uh, really done well for us, so much appreciated. Anything else, gentlemen? 
Mr. Chairman. Yes. Do we have a timeline? Not, I'm not pushing one way or the other, um, but maybe in the future, are we going to meet again in person, whether it be six months from now, two months from now? Do we have any idea where we're looking at? Why, do you miss us? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> you can admit it. Uh, the meetings go easier in person, but you know, uh, I would defer to Tom. Either. Yeah. I'm going to defer to Tom. Has there been any administrative discussion of that? I suspect there has been. I don't uh, know of any details of that. Um, I think was de dependent on uh, health orders from from the state, as well as I believe the. Uh, sunset of the virtual meeting law is the maybe end of July or end of June. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and so I know, um, you know, as soon as it's it's deemed safe to do so, you know, I'm sure that conversation should be had with the city commission and subsequent all commissions um, down the road from there. So we don't have a timeline, but we'll make sure to update whenever um, whenever we can. I, I would think that we'd probably most likely follow the lead of the city commissioners on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just going to guess that at some point, because we're still phasing out of this pandemic, that there'll still be some sort of option for members of various commissions if they want to still do remote for their own um, safety or health concerns, that that opportunity will still be there. But good good question good point i've been thinking about the same thing john yep anything else for the good of the order need a motion to dismiss so moved need a second second thank you gentlemen thank See you, you. Have a good, good day, day. Yeah. good night everybody